It's a big word. I don't mean in length. I'm just, it's big from up here. It seems big. So first of all, Richard Hollis is wondering, how in the world do you follow a Viking? Yeah, have you ever been in this position? As I stand here before you, I'm wondering, how do you follow a Viking? Rebuild the, the village, I guess. Um, OK, so where to start? Uh, good news, bad news, I've got about 20 minutes to give you information that I've accumulated over 20 years. That's the bad news. The good news is, oh, I had a lot of coffee, and I think we can do it easy. In fact, we should bring it in about five, seven minutes um, if I do it. But I wanted to start here. I wanted to start, uh, so one of the things we do uh, for the, the company I work for is we're a qualified security assessor. We go into companies, and we help them comply to the PCI, the payment card industry, DSS, data security standards. Um, and uh, every single time I go, no matter the size of the company, you know, the locations of the company, the first question I'm always asked is, Rich, it, and they struggle, as they're struggling with it, Rich, why do we have to do this? Why, why, why do we have to do this security stuff? You know, we've been processing credit cards for 20, 25 years, and we've never done anything to protect them. I'm a guy that thinks the answer's in the question a lot of times, but I, I, I that this just, how do you answer that? And um, I think the best way to answer that is I, I, I want to I show you, I want to give you that feeling. So this was not billed as a workshop, but I want you to, I've got, what, 19 minutes left, and I'm going to take whatever time it takes to ask everybody, could everybody t take your credit card out? Take right now, take two seconds, pull out your credit card, please. I will stand up here until you do. We're, I'm an American, we're drama queens, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. To, everybody got their credit card? Hold it up in their right hand. Got it? Credit card in the right hand? Listen, I should participate. Credit card, right hand, hand it to the person next to you on your right. <laughs> I mean it. Hand it to the person next to you on, on, on the right. There goes mine. That was actually my Oyster card. I'm not giving my credit. <laughs> you feel that? Do you feel that? OK, now, if you, the credit card you just received, put it in your pocket. Put it in your pocket. No one's going anywhere. We got people at the doors. Put it in your pocket. Does that feel strange, doesn't it? How many here have, in the last six months, have ordered something off Amazon? Yeah. Did you feel that way when you gave Amazon your card? And you just gave a stranger your card. And you guys look strange from up here. But, I, uh, but doesn't that feel strange? What are your expectations of that person next to you to protect your card? Not to leave the room? Uh, put it in your, you know, keep it in plain sight where I can see it? Put it in your pocket? You have expectations, right? If that person got up and started to walk out of the room, what would you do? Yeah, we'd have a bit of a moment here, wouldn't we? You'd tackle them to the ground like they were stealing your wallet or your purse. You have expectations in that person that you've never met, you've never known. They're holding financial details that are associated with your personal life, and you have security expectations. But it's, isn't that odd that as we use the internet, as we use Amazon, as we upload these same details and give them to strangers, companies that you've never, you know, uh, we, you order flowers or, or you order socks for your nan, uh, you know, from socks.co.uk, never heard of this company before, but you don't hesitate to give them a credit or debit card because you have expectations that they will protect it. How will they protect it? Have you defined those? That's what PCI is, the definition of expectations, because no one, and I mean no one, was actually carrying out those expectations. We saw that in, in huge, huge uh, losses and hacks uh, over the last couple years, haven't we? Do this homework. Go back and look up Google and find out, is Amazon PCI compliant? Who here thinks it is? You don't know, though, do you? I know. OK, I am a drama queen, I told you. That was, that was clear. You've got to be when you follow a Viking, don't you? You've got to have that little drama. OK, so that's what PCI DSS is, all right? The leveling of expectations. PCI DSS is very plainly uh, all the Visa, MasterCard, American Express. These are competing brands, understand. They all got into a room, and what they did was brilliant. They said the fraud has got to stop. Remember the old days where you picked up and said, somebody, I think somebody frauded my card. I didn't buy this mink coat in Milan last season. They said, no problem, Mr. Hollis, take, take that right off. 
Then they gave us little PIN numbers, those little four-digit security PIN numbers, and now if you have a fraud on your uh, credit or debit card, it's your problem. So they passed the, they passed the fraud problem on to the banks and the, and the vendors, meaning the businesses, that process, store, or transmit. All right, what they did is brilliant, but they, they didn't make this stuff up. All right, they went to exa you know, ex existing standards for protecting sensitive data, like ISO. And they came out with this standard. It's made of six goals, 12 requirements, 288 controls. This is what the companies are struggling to put on these expectations of, of six goals, 12 requirements, and 288 goals. OK, a, a goal. Let's build and maintain a good ne uh, safe network. That's a goal. Anybody here want to argue with that goal? It's pretty much, you know, hey, keep my, keep, did, you have, did everybody give the credit cards back, by the way? I didn't see those go back. That's a strange crowd. Um, okay, protect cardholder data, goal. Good goal, how can you argue with that? It's a goal. Okay, underneath that goal are requirements. To protect cardholder data, hey, protect it in storage, protect it in transmission. These are requirements. Underneath that requirements are, are the 288 controls, the devil in the details, okay? But you, put, you implement a, a control to meet a requirement to meet a goal. You don't want to keep your eye, you always, what's the goal? Uh, to protect the guard, card data. And if you look at PSS, uh, the, the uh, PCI DSS like that, it changes everything. You understand it for what it is. It's a risk management framework. It doesn't guarantee anything. Everybody saw the TK Maxx uh, br uh, breach? Uh, when, if, when the dust finally settled, it was over 88 million credit cards that were lost. They were PCI compliant. Pregnant pause, drama school, I learned this. They were PCI compliant. PCI compliance doesn't guarantee anything. It's just a risk management framework to identify, minimize, and manage the threats to the cardholder data. Okay, so you've got these controls. You're going to do them in a specific order, okay? And they're called milestones. We all know this. Every, the 46% of us who are in this room and process, uh, store, or transmit credit cards know this. You do things in an order to, uh, to eliminate the most amount of risk. First one is, where, where's my data, and do, did I write policies to protect it? Uh, milestone two is all about the network. Milestone three is the code. Milestone four is uh, uh, logs and records, incidents, and could I find if, if I even had a breach, and then to test yourself. 288 controls broken up into these six milestones. With me so far? Applies to any system that processes, stores, or transmits credit card detail. Now, we had 46% of the, the attendees here say that they do that. Now, the, the real, you know, you uncover that stone, and the real subset of, of companies underneath that are if you are connected to a company that processes, stores, or transmits credit card detail, PCI compliance applies to you, too. Do you provide a service to a company that facilitates credit card detail? Do you store it for them? Are you just connected to their systems, and you provide maintenance? PCI applies to you because PCI is based on the whole fundamental theory of security, which is, you know, first of all, you never hack into, you know, the, the Hollywood movies we see are all wrong. You never hack into a system. If I want to hack into a bank, I don't hack into the bank. I hack into a company that's connected to the bank, and then I go in. It's called proxy server hacking. I never, ever, you know, I'm like a ninja. I want to get in, I want to get out, and if I want a smoking gun pointed to somebody else's IP address. Okay, so when systems are connected together, they're like rock climbers, rope to the side of the cliff. You bring one down, you bring down everybody who's connected to them. So if you're a company that's even connected by a VPN or a support provider, uh, you're behind the same firewall, you're under a managed service, and you, you are connected to a company that processes, stores, or transmits, you have to do these 288 controls. Okay. So it's the systems that, it's the second part of this that really can throw this, this, makes it this big or this big for your company. And so what I'm talking about is you've, if you've got a laptop and it, you've got emails in the, in the Outlook, that's in scope. You have to put the PC, I put 288 controls onto that laptop. Now if that laptop's connected to the printer, the printer's in scope. Connected to a scanner, the scanner's in scope. Connected to a system with voice over IP server, that's in scope. The connectivity question is everything in PCI. 
Okay, so how do you reduce this? How do you bring this down? First of all, you've got to find out what do I have, where do I have it? You can't start to reduce something until you measure it, right? Where do you think, uh, what, what do you think you have? I th you'd be surprised. You can get freeware software out there. That's card, ca card scanning software, all right, that you, you, you just point it to all the IPs on your network and it brings back where, where this card data is. And you'll find it on scanners with IP addresses. You'll find it on voice over IPs. You'll find it on copy machines. You'll find it on laptops, on mobile phones. You'd be surprised where you find it. The real question is, where isn't it in my network? But until you do this basic exercise, you don't understand how big the project is going to be for you. Once you, once you go out there, it's like mapping, mapping the area to, to start to segment it, uh, segment it down. You're going to produce something just, just, just like this, a nice little heat map. And the heat map's got, the, you know, the, and you'll identify where the card data is on your network. And make sure you include who's connected to my network. My third party providers, my storage provider, managed firewall providers, any other service provider that you use that's on your network, it should show it. Because then that, that's the game, that everybody connected on that, on that piece of paper is in scope of PCI uh, DSS. And you look and say, okay, it's on server WS34459 down here, okay? And then you look at that, and then the game begins. You've got 288 controls, but this is what it's after to identify how that card data can leave that system. Data's like, like water down a pipe. It'll flow freely anywhere until it's blocked. And you've all seen this. This is an old data leakage slide when data leakage was the craze three or four years ago, and that's all. We're, but this is exactly what PCI DSS addresses. They have controls for every single one of these things, for scanning, for testing, for, for encryption. And it's to prevent the data from going out the back door without you knowing about it. You've identified where you have. You've, you've got your map now. You, identify, you, you know where the card data is and where it isn't. The next thing you have to do is get rid of it. How many of the 40, uh, you're not going to raise your hands, I know that. Uh, I, why do we keep card data after the transaction? I don't get that. I give you my card data, you're in Amazon, you know, and, and the Amazon keeps it forever. Amazon has everybody card in, in this room who's raised their hand and has for as many years as they've hold it. But us as small businesses or medium-sized businesses, we, do, we just like to keep data, don't we? It's convenient. But as long as you're holding that data, you're, ho you know, you're holding an apple for someone to come and take from you. You've got to reduce it, get rid of it. They'll always come back and give it to you again for another service. It, serve, it has, gives you no service whatsoever, no value whatsoever to hold on to a customer's card after the transaction. And when you do, the system you hold it in is subject to PCI DSS. So the more you can throw away, the smaller this program is going to be on you. Third parties are, are the, biggest, the biggest problem here. Okay, so then now, now you've, you've identified where, what you have, where, where you've had it. You start to throw it away. Now what, I, what I'd suggest is look at your partners who are supplying these services and move the, the responsibility over to them. If you can, payment gateway provider. Why do you have to process it? Why can't you go out and find a third party? Then they have the 288 things to, uh, to, to implement. You still carry the liability. If I come to you and give you my card and you lose it, it's you I'm taking to court. But you, you've got the third party who's processed it, and you've got a legal contract in between you and he through a SLA, a service level agreement, that says he will meet these 288 things. It's the easiest option. And sometimes it's the most cost-effective option. Liability is still yours. That, third part, that payment gateway provider that you used here, I'm just going to have these guys use all, process all my card uh, transactions. If they lose it, it's still your problem. But you address that in a service level agreement, and it might be more cost effective than you taking on those, that list of things to do and still carrying the liability. Give it to a professional. Every single payment gateway provider out there understands PCI DSS. OK, now if you can't do that, then you've got to look at your network and start to segment it. All right, and everybody hates this. Everybody wants to be a part of the community. The, the, you know, the CEO wants to be able to use his iPad and log into the Active Directory, and that's your whole storing card holder data. 
And so you're chasing him around to get his pad and, and put 288 controls on there. Let it go. This has got to be driven by a need to know. Employees who don't need to access card data, you take them off that, you, you make sure that they're segmented and they can't physically get at, get at it in the network. You reduce the risk and you reduce the probability of just somebody accidentally losing it. Okay, so you do this, the, the hardware. This is where you put a firewall in. This is where you've got a wireless network and it's broadcasting internet uh, connectivity throughout your marketing department or your, your, your development department. You firewall that off from the rest of the network where you're processing. And you take everybody out in the, in the marketing department, you take them out of scope, all the devices, automatically with one, with one firewall. That's a huge savings and a huge reduction in the impact of the program on your company. Okay, so that, that's to all the systems. Now this is the easiest one. From the place that you take the uh, card data all the way through to the bank, you encrypt, the, you encrypt it. Anybody here doing this? Thanks for raising the hand here, because I'm still a little nervous following a Viking. <laughs> so the minute you take the card data, you take it all the way, all the way through the bank, back to the merchant, and you encrypt it. All right, it doesn't take you off. It's 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 excellent way, but that data, that encrypted tunnel, all right, still is subject to controls. The device that you take it on, the point of sale device, has to be configured. So if somebody grabbed it and they ran down the street and they opened it up, they couldn't re they couldn't take all the transactions that were on there because if it's on default, that's exactly what it will do. So it has to be configured not to have a memory capability, not to be able to print out the last 20 transactions. It has to be tested, okay, but, uh, uh, and then who owns this device? Are you renting the device from the bank or do you own this? A lot of people go to the bank and the bank says, we'll give you the point of sale devices, here it is, and, and Barclays gives them to you. And you're using them and you're thinking Barclays has liability in case, uh, of some, in case they're not configured to P in PCI DSS. They're not. Any liability has got to be established in your service level agreement for the per people who give you the point of sale device. You still have the compliance requirement. <laughs> My advice, you ask Barclays for, point, for PCI DSS approved terminals and make that a contractually required. Okay, and the last thing I had for you, five, uh, five ways, is consider a tokenization. A token, a, a token is just a, a surrogate value. All right, it's a system where, where essentially you're taking a, you're taking a card data and swapping it out with, uh, um, with another value. All right, you're looking, it comes into a token server, your, your card data comes out, your 16 digits go on to a server, and the server assigns it just a random value number and pushes that through the system. And what, what the tokenized value goes through the system does not apply for PCI DSS because it's not card data. If you intercepted that, you couldn't fraud the card. So it's a very, very, it's a very popular solution. It's a very effective solution, cost-effective solution. Uh, if you can do it, it's just swiping it out and giving the, giving the card details coded uh, uh, surrogate values. And then as it goes through your system, your system does not have to implement the 288 controls. Okay, um, and it, the very, very simple, where the card, where the token meets the card value, that, that, that intersection, that nexus is in scope of PCI DSS. All right, after that, the, where the value goes our way, it's not in scope. So it's very, very, it pinpoints and literally you just have one server that's in scope. So this is what I'm up here, you know, dancing around after a Viking entertained us to, to say, if I had a company and I, tomorrow I were processing, storing, and transmit, th this is the most cost-effective way is what do I have, where do I have it, have I documented it, okay? Have I looked at my third-party suppliers? Have I limited access to need to know, need to know only, segmented the network down to, you know, down to just one or two servers that process, store, or transmit? And have I made sure in all my service level agreements with all my vendors connected to me that they're responsible in the event of a breach? And because PCI DSS is legislation or is regulation now, this is, this is not a cost plus uh, conversation you're having with your, your supplier. If you provide a service nowadays that facilitates card data, you have to, by regulation, meet this requirement. It's like health, health and safety, fire and, safe, fire and life safety. So discover and document, destroy and discope, uh, bring it down, outsource where you can, but make sure you've got the oversight in the SLA. Uh, at the end of the day, the breach is yours. 
You lose my credit card detail, you'll see me in court, not your vendor who processed it for me, for you. You separate and segment and think about tokenization. This is the ultimate best way, is to go back to that feeling I gave you with some guy, with some person sitting next to you holding your credit card. Remember what that feels like. As you look at the PCI DSS and start to implement these controls, the best decision making uh, uh, element you could use is what would I do if my card data was in here? You know, I talked to CEOs of companies and I said, is your card, would you put your card in that database? And they said, no, 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 no. Why not? These are people's lives we're talking about. You know, there are, there are expectations here that, that this card data that belongs to you and me and, you know, my card's still sitting on this table. I don't know if you've seen me look down 300 times during this presentation. I got my eye on it. That is, that is clearly, now why can't you take that back to your organization and look at every single credit card that you process could, could be mine, could be the person sitting next to you and realize that you've got just due diligence. There's an expectation on you and your company from, the, from this client. You're going to protect that. And at the end of the day, what, just ask yourself, what if this were my credit card? Would I take this risk? And you're clearly on the path for PCI. That's all PCI DSS is. You personalize that data. You make it a personal transaction. You remember that this is detail associated with somebody's life, and, and PCI compliance looks completely different to you. That's all I had. Thanks. <laughs>